Uncle Doug. Uncle Dan. <laughs> you're very quick. You're very quick. Uh, you're eager. Um, here's these are distressing times in this our country. For those of us who are concerned about fairness and uh, you know the constitution of this country yeah. and you know people having rights and whatever, <laughs> it's become a bit shaky. It's yeah. It it's feels a little shaky. Fraught. Is the word I would use. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things that's happened recently is that people in high places in the public sphere, in the in, in, in our government, uh, are turning to religion for their guideposts in yeah. a way expressly forbidden by the Constitution of the, these United States. Yep. And you're going to tell us a little bit about one of those instances and what, what it might mean. Indeed. And you know, Uncle Dan, we try to not make this a political podcast. It's not. Um, and and it just this in this day and age, that's getting harder and harder. Well, um, religion is politics right now. Most definitely. And, mm. and I would say in this particular case especially, it's not that we're going into politics necessarily, but more that politics kind of veered into our lane. Yeah. And, and um, you know... I think what we've tried to do with this is this podcast is, is, you know, if there's anyone listening to this podcast on a wax cylinder in a few years, <laughs> gathered around the fire in the afterscape, um, maybe they can take some comfort that it wasn't all doom and gloom, <laughs> but, but you know, today is, we're, we're only a couple of days away from the 4th of July. Mm. So, you know, it's the, Canada day. I need, I need oh. out today as we record this. No kidding. Yeah. How, how did I not know that? My brother's in Canada. Yeah. Oh, well. You're, you and I are both half Canadian. Yeah, exactly. I knew I felt weird today. But yeah, yeah, yeah. The good, I thought the, like side of us, the side of us that can feel proud should be, should be <laughs> swelling a little bit right now. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's my top half. Right. So, um, yeah, so there's kind of a confluence of, you know, the, uh, the 4th of July current events and one uh, Jefferson Beauregard Sessions the third. Oh, my God. Um, the, 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 the Keebler elf of, of politics. Uh, uh, you know... <laughs> It's funny because you can't, sometimes in life, in, in a movie uh, or a book, we're fine with there being kind of a true villain. Yeah. But for whatever reason in life, we always try and ascribe some kind of good character to people. We just can't believe that there might be people who are true villains. <laughs> Jeffrey, Jefferson Beauregard Sessions III is a true villain. Um, and the other day, um, he used, he cited the Bible and again, this is the Attorney General of the United States cited the Bible to justify the child separation policy of the Trump administration on our southern border, wherein families are being separated, even families who are seeking asylum as they have an internationally guaranteed right to do. Right. And so Jefferson Sessions, when when called on this, said, quote, and I, I want to do his voice, but I, I don't I don't I don't respect him enough to <laughs> imitate him. Um he said and this is his words, which are out of the gate are incorrect. I would cite you to the Apostle Paul. You know, of course, you should have said I would cite the Apostle Paul or direct you to the Apostle Paul, but he's a fucking idiot. Right. Uh, I would cite you to the Apostle Paul and his clear and wise command in Romans 13 to obey the laws of the government because God has ordained them for the purpose of order. Sessions went on to say, orderly and lawful processes are good in themselves and protect the weak and lawful. So... so Okay, we. This is nonsensical on its face, right? But it's deeper than that. Anyway, I, it's much deeper than that. I mean, you're before let's before we dive into the to what it is in uh, uh, Romans thirteen. He's talking about. Let's remind ourselves the First Amendment of the of the of the Constitution, which says Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Right. So this is the right. Attorney General of the United States. Using Who? the Bible to justify a policy. Right. He is, he's literally like referring people who are questioning his, uh, his choice. Now this is, this was in reference to, to the, the separating of mm -hmm. families yep. down on our Southern border. Uh, don't worry though. He doesn't do it to, uh, refugee slash asylum seeker families that are white. No, no, certainly not. Uh, so never the, fear. The people that count are okay. Uh, but he's doing, but he's doing this and. His response is not, let me show you where the precedent is in law exactly. where this is okay. Exactly. His response is, but Jesus done told me I could do it. Exactly. Um, and also, 
Okay, the problems with this are so <laughs> plentiful. I'll let you. I'll let you get us to them. I, I'm just. Well, let's let's just let's back crying. up a little bit and, and actually kind of dive into who is Jefferson Beauregard Sessions the third. Yeah. Um, he was born in Selma, Alabama, on Christmas Eve, no less, 1946. Oh, what a what a present the Lord gave us on that Indeed. Christmas. Indeed. Um, as as is uh, evident from his name, he was named after his pappy, who was named after his grandpappy, uh-huh. who was named after Confederate President Jefferson Davis and Confederate General P.G.T. Beauregard, who attacked Fort Sumter in 1861, kicking off the Civil War. Of course he was. So, of course he was. So, of course he was. Yeah, I mean, it's just <laughs> it's when someone is trying to tell you the, how much of a racist shit they are, believe them. Yeah. Um, okay. After becoming a lawyer, he became a U.S. assistant uh, assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of Alabama under Reagan, until he was asked to resign by the incoming Clinton administration twelve years later. Which is actually pretty standard SOP for you know a new administration. Oftentimes, will push out all the U.S. attorneys and hire new ones. Um, in 1985, in what would become a pattern, he prosecuted three black community organizers, including Martin Luther King Jr.'s former aide Albert Turner for voter fraud. The three were acquitted after just three hours of del- deliberation by an Alabama jury. So uh, JBS3 was so chastised, he retor- retired quietly from public life. Oh. Had, Except that he didn't. Had that took. <laughs> right. It was, I mean, it was a terrible, it was a really embarrassing trial. Like, three hours of deliberation. Yeah. And they came back and said, no, you guys are all good. It's, three hours is zero. It's zero. They, they went and had a snack. Right. Um, in 86, Reagan nominated JBS3 to be a judge in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Alabama. But quotes from his past like this one, quote, the Ku Klux Klan was okay until I found out they smoked pot. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. That's Um, impressive. That is is a level (laughs) of awful... The you the like comedians sit around in a room for hours to uh, craft that level of awful. It is a boss hog level of <laughs> like you is, know, it, it's it's amazing. That is cartoon like cartoon <sighs> villains aren't allowed to get that awful because you wouldn't believe it, right? <laughs> <laughs> um. So anyway, uh, his his nomination for that judgeship was derailed for only the second time in American history. Um, wow. Yeah, because you know almost. Always, presidents get the judges they want. That's part of the conundrum we're in right now. Right. Um, but um, for a district court judge to be derailed uh, because the the Senate found him to be too racist is unprecedented. Yeah. Um, and that was back in the eighties. Yeah. That wasn't exactly. That, I mean, we were racister even then than now. Yep. I guess so. not though, because uh, um, undaunted, oh, well. JBS three went on to be the become the Alabama Attorney General from ninety five to ninety seven. And then a U.S. senator for the state of Alabama from 1997 to 2017. Yeah. And in 2016, he backed a young, charismatic, upstart candidate for president named Donald Jackboot Trump. And because some white grandma didn't know how to format her emails properly, a man named after the leader of a treasonous rebellion against the United States and the traitor who fired the first shots in that rebellion became attorney general of the United States of America in 2017. God bless America. <laughs> now, this brings us to J- uh, Jefferson Beauregard, Sessions the Third, quoting the Bible to justify prying children away from their desperate parents. Can you read us the quote? Yes. Um, we're g- we're going to get there. In fact, we're going to spend a little time on it. Okay. Um, so just a little bit more background on this uh, um, epistle and kind of a little, just a little bit of color for it. You're going to pistol me? I'm going to piss all over you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, most scholars agree that this epistle or letter was actually written by Paul, not all the ones that are attributed to him were. Right. It's the longest epistle and therefore quantifiably the worst. <laughs> <laughs> because the more you epistle, the worse it gets. That's just, that is physics. That's true. Uh, and it's considered to be one of the more consequential texts in the New Testament because it lays out a lot of the doctrine that most Christians still adhere to today. So it's, right. it's a big deal. Um, and, but chapter 13, which we'll talk about in a second, has attained a kind of folk status by bigots, racists, and your various and sundry bad guys, um, because it basically seems to justify every group of cops beating a black teen- black teenager while yelling, stop resisting. Right. Um, it's also problematic for Jefferson Beauregard Sessions, the third, uh, because this scripture has been used, was used by English loyalists in the run up to the Revolutionary War. Sure. To justify the colony's continued allegiance to the crown. It was used by slave owners in the run-up to the Civil War to justify the continued existence of slavery, which was entirely legal at the time. Sure. 
Uh, the Nazis used it. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Yeah, there's literally no time when when someone in government uses this particular uh, scripture when it isn't to justify pure evil. Most definitely. The only time this one gets trot out, the only time yep. this one gets trot out is when some fascist is standing on some minority's neck. Right. Yep. And saying, look the other way. I told you, don't look at this. Exactly. Look over there. Exactly. Okay, so here you, 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 you're you itching for the actual uh, yeah, verbiage. Yeah, I, so I want to hear it. Here we go. Here's the thing. There's, the, the, there's different um, translations of the Bible, obviously. Yeah. And the language in them differs, and it differs in a very fundamental way. So here is the New English version. Sure. Um, and it says... Uh, let uh, so here it is of uh, uh, the uh, operating um, scriptures here, verse one and two in chapter thirteen of uh, Romans. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. Okay, that seems pretty clear, yes? That's pretty powerful. I mean, leaving aside the incredible hypocrisy that a dude named after the two most two of the most notorious lawbreakers in American history is, is hiding behind this dreck. Um, right. Well, I mean, we're going to get to other reasons why this is not okay. Yes. Yeah. But you, you wanted to do another version of it? Well, there's a couple of versions I just want to hit on real quick. Okay. So this is the voice. This is a, a very modern sounding translation of the Bible. It is important that all of us submit to the authorities who have charge over us because God established all authority in heaven and on the earth. Therefore, a person who rebels against the authority rebels against the order he established, and people like that can expect to face certain judgment. A couple more. Jesus. Uh, the modern English version. So, the, I mean, you could see where he's like, yeah, this is, this is what it says. Yeah. Modern English says, let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those, who, who, those that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists authority... Resist God. Okay. Um, Where was Romans thirteen in their minds when Obama was president? Exactly. Exactly. Like there, there's so many problems with this. Do they say that the same thing applies if they happen to be in Saudi Arabia? I exactly. It's just it's so problematic. It's just there's no logical no logic to this whatsoever. Okay, so I'm going to do two more, and, okay. and then because so All right. the Living Bible, another kind of modern translation, says, "Oh, the Living Bible's a treat. It is a treat. Isn't Have it? you ever read anything? Read else? Oh my God." Um, it says, obey the government, for God is the one who put it there. There is no government anywhere that God has not placed in power. What? what? Well, that's what it's saying. I know, right? So those who refuse to obey the laws of the land are refusing to obey God, and punishment will follow. Okay, I mean, I'm sorry. It says, there is no government that God has not placed in power. There's no such thing as a corrupt government. So the Nazis, North Korea, Stalin, Pol Pot. Any gov a government that bans Christianity... Right. Has Stalin every right to do so. was doing the Lord's work. Exactly. According to Paul. Now, here's where it gets, I, I think, interesting. Um, Paul? Is it Paul? It's yeah, Paul. it's Paul. Yeah. Um, listeners will know that I'm kind of partial to the King James version of the Bible. <laughs> really? Um, you, you never say it. And, and you know, the reason is, is because you and I were raised Mormon. That's the version we read. Yeah. That's the version that Joseph Smith... Uh, copied when he made when he wrote the Book of Mormon. <laughs> right. So our lives are kind of steeped in the King James version, the thee and thou version of the Bible. Right. So here's what, and it's also the most prevalent. Like That's it is the 16th most, century bit of brilliance. Right. But it's it's wildly the most accepted, read, uh, f familiar version of the Bible in English. In English, correct. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter if it's not another language; it doesn't count. Um, <laughs> where did that little bit of bigotry come from? <laughs> Too close to sessions. Yeah. Uh, here's what the King James Version says. Same fucking scripture. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that, that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to, them, to themselves damnation. I don't interpret that the same way I interpret the other versions, where it's mm. like, obey the government. Mm -hmm. This one says, obey the higher powers. Yeah. Right? And now, is that the clergy? Is that the state government? Is that God himself? I don't know. Now, the deference that you show to this, uh, to the King James Version is interesting, because if you do any research into the history of the writing of okay. this version, you know that it was like, literally, it was a bunch of people who were, because there was... 
turmoil between was, the Catholics yeah. and the uh, and 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 the 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 new Protestants of England. Yeah. And they were f- sort of battling with each other to come up with a version that didn't offend one or the other right. side of this thing. So half of them were okay with the government at the time, and half of right, them exactly. hated the government at the time. And this is the mishmash that exactly. we got from that. And that, that's a great point. And I, I just it 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 for them to use this and be like game over, checkmate, right? And it's not even internally consistent. And here and here's okay. No. So that's that's the script that Je- Beauregard Sessions is using to justify this yeah. policy. Here's here's one has to ask Paul. Do you remember what happened to your Lord and Savior? <laughs> exactly. Because it was the authorities that fucking killed him. That tried him and killed him. Executed him. And that you're supposed to feel great about that, apparently. Right. Yeah. It's, you can't. mind Literally, if you think about this for a second. Right. For a fraction of a second, you know that it can't possibly be true. Now, here's, here's a little cherry on top of this shit pile. Uh-huh. Um, because... In that same chapter, and Romans thirteen is not a long chapter. It's it, on a oh. on your laptop. It's not even a full screen. Right. It's a, you know it's a small chapter. In that same chapter, there are these nuggets. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. How about this one? For this thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this say, saying, namely. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And lastly, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Same fucking chapter. Right there. Which he, so one scripture he's using to justify breaking the rest of the scripture. Right. There's, right. I mean, just, it, it, just read a little further, Beauregard. It's just mind numbingly just frustrating. Read just a little further. Uh, I will. As we as we sort of wind this down, refer our listeners to uh, Uncle Mark's first semi-viral tweet. Oh yeah, which uh, if you guys aren't following him on 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 the Twitter, he's very very funny. Anyway, uh, there's one that <laughs> shows a very austere and terrifying picture of what someone in in the uh, in the thread calls Der Keebler Führer. <laughs> uh, Mr. Sessions, <laughs> and, and I will, should I read it? I, sh- I will you read should, for you. Yeah, read it. Mark's tweet, because it's kind of delightful. He says, folks, you don't have to be uncivilized, but if this creature shows up in your cafe, tell it you don't have stewed possum and radish weed. If he don't skedaddle, if it don't skedaddle, clap three times. Tell it the folks, tell it the forks have previously been used by a queer gal what can read. It won't hate you no more. <laughs> Cute, uh, and yeah, I, I, it's just we're in a we're in a moment right now. That's at How to Heretic, everybody. At How to Heretic, that's right. Yeah, and definitely follow Uncle Mark on that Twitter. was that was retweeted by one uh, Roseanne Arquette. I I saw that. <laughs> that's awesome. Was it? Well, one of the Arquettes. One of the Arquettes. Patricia Arquette. Is there a Roseanne Arquette? I may have made that one up. I'm <laughs> not sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So you know, it's just it's just shit. And, and, you know, A, why the fuck is our attorney general using the Bible to justify policy? Because someone animated a turd and right. now he's in charge. Right. Oh, and and it's, a, it's a problematic. If you're using the same justification for what you're doing as the Nazis used, I, th- I think you should have a long, dark tea time of the soul. Ask that's some just questions. Me. Just ask some questions. Unless, of course, the most obvious thing is you feel the same way they do. Yeah. And I... Golly. Wonder if that could possibly be the truth. <laughs> when someone's trying to tell you they're a racist, believe them. Right. When someone keeps saying it. Yeah. Just in, I mean, I mean, the only words that he's ever actually used to say it are things like the KKK was okay until they smoked weed. You know what? What sucks so much about that? It's just kind of a great line. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, I'm gonna go smoke some weed with some clan members. Let's move on. Moving on. Moving on.